Hey y'all. Um, I have a bit of a ramble tonight, and it's not a happiness ramble either. I, I'm not sure I'm even going to upload this video. I I'll probably will. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Of course I will. That's why I'm making it. Um, I've noticed some things about myself lately that are really disturbing. Um, I have become so impatient, but beyond impatient. I, I become enraged when I deal with inefficiencies um, in others, people who are either selling me something or in, the, in a service industry or are behind a teller window or, or, you know, are trying to rent me something or whatever, whatever the thing is, whatever the business transaction we're in, it seems like more and more I react to the other guy not doing his job perfectly. He might be doing his job well or she might. There may be, you know, technically nothing wrong with the way they're doing it, but I find um, uh, shortcomings um, in just about everyone. Um, there is a class of people, though, that I tend to find easier to deal with. And those are generally middle-aged women. Women who have been in their field for a long time. Like, let's take bank tellers, for example. Um, the 55-year-old bank teller that sort of oversees all the 20-year-old bank tellers. She's generally the person who can solve your problem if you have a problem. She's usually the person who can figure out a workaround or knows somebody to call or um, can, you know, just officiously quote you the, you know, the chapter and verse of why they cannot help you with that thing, which is fine. Um, in other words, they seem to have their shit together, whereas... And, and this has been a theme, I think, you, you may pick up. Whereas, you know, people in doctor's offices, people, um, uh, checkers, people like that, um, are people who do those jobs and who are young, are often so clueless, it makes me want to slap them. I really want to slap them. Today, I had one of those, I want to slap you moments. So I had to drop off this specimen at a diagnostic lab for my mom. So I go in, nobody behind the counter, nobody behind the counter, and nobody behind the counter, and no instructions about what you're supposed to do. Just stand in there twiddling my thumbs for about five minutes, which is a long time to stand at a counter. And so I'm just about ready to be bold and open the door or tap, make some noise on the girl's computer mouse or something to get somebody's attention. When here comes this broad coming around the corner, you know, what can I do for you? Well, I need to drop off this specimen. Um, here you go. Oh, no, no, wait, she says. You have to fill out this and you have to sign that and um, what's your relationship to the patient and all this kind of stuff. And the, her attitude while she was doing it was very... Um, kind of quasi-officious, but also um, a little demeaning and invalidating at the same time. She called me hun. This girl is, she might have been all of 23 years old, and I'm 54. Um, you can call me ma'am, or you can call me Cheryl, or you can call me Ms. Stanfield, but don't call me hun. Um... That really irritated me. Um, and this came on the heels of spending a couple of days just enraged. Everything anyone said to me made me crazy. And most of the stuff that, that I was noticing was making me insane were inefficiencies or s things that were sloppy. Um, for example... My mom wanted 
us to buy her some herbs for her anti-cancer protocol thing that she's whipping up in her kitchen. And she wasn't able to communicate exactly what she wanted. Um, it was very vague, but yet she expected us to hop to and get it for her right now. And I kept trying to explain, you know, what do you mean by black walnut tincture? There's a lot of them out there. What speci How speci specifically do you want it to be? And she couldn't answer. So I bought some, brought it home, and it wasn't the right thing. Turned around, got some more, it wasn't the right thing. And I'm like, Mom, tell me, what do you want exactly so that I can go on Amazon and find it for you? And she still wasn't able to tell me, but yet she was upset that I wasn't bringing her what she wanted. It's that kind of mixed message um, thing that I've been, I seem to be coming up against time and time again these days. Now, maybe I'm just being hypersensitive. Um, maybe I'm the one who, who does not understand what the other guy's saying. I don't know. It could be all me. Um, but I don't think so. I don't think it is on me. I think it's that, this is what I think is going on. When, when my mother was still very, very sick, I was in control. I had, I made the schedules. I called the shots. I had, I did the shopping. I told everybody what to do and they did it. And things ran very efficiently. Well, now that my mom's awake, now she has opinions. She has things that she wants done that she can't explain why that I don't agree with. Um, she's um, become demanding in a different way, different than she was demanding when she was sick and out of it. Now she demandingly wants to talk all the time, demandingly wants me to spend the night all the time, demandingly wants me to buy these things that she can't tell me what they are, um, and just yap and yap and yap in my ear, and I'm... I have like no, um, I have no buffer for that anymore. So I'm finding myself just snapping at her and being really mean. And I think what it, what it boils down to is this. I haven't been able to control my own life while I've been taking care of her. My own life has literally gone to hell. Um, my home, my animals, I'm not on the, the right vet schedule with the animals, I'm not, I haven't got my sheep shorn, I'm, I relied on somebody else to do my weed eating and it was done sloppy and blah blah blah, I could go on and on. Point is, I'm not in control in my life. Well, I was in control at my mom's when she was ill. That was a place in my life that I was in, in control. Now that she's back, I'm no longer in control. So, I come home. And I look around, and I'm overwhelmed, and I'm not in control here either. And I'm just freaking angry because my little pea brain is telling me um, it's my mom's fault because I had to go take care of her for a year. Um, so therefore, she's the one responsible for the fact that I'm out of control. So it's real convoluted like that. And um, obviously, all of that's fallacy. It's nobody's fault but my own. I didn't have to take all that on. I could have demanded help. I mean, there's a lot of other ways I could have handled it. Um, I handled it like a general because that's the kind of person I am. And um, people who can't delegate and people who want to control every last little thing in the game tend to be very uptight, easily freaked out, um, bitchy, mean, um, you know, basket cases, because we can't let go of anything. And when we let go of something, or at least when I let go of something, I drop that sucker like a hot potato, I don't touch it, don't go near it again. I can't, like, do things halfway very easily. And I think part of this is because I am probably somewhat autistic. Um, the more I learn about autism, the more I see um, personality traits in myself and behavioral traits, that follow along, you know, down at the lower end of the autism spectrum, but definitely in the autism spectrum. So, I don't know, maybe we can all say that about ourselves, I don't know. But um, I have an autistic kid, so who knows? Maybe I show show signs of that as well. So anyway, um, 
that's what's been going on. I've just been very off balance, extremely emotional, very sensitive to every little thing, um, not sleeping well, real tired, um, real achy, anxious, nervous, binge watching YouTube because that's one thing I can do um, that calms me down, you know, is to is to go brain dead and either read or watch YouTube. So anyway, that's what's been going on. So um, yeah, I hope I get out of that funk. I, I called my mom and, and apologized to her, poor thing. Um, you know, I said some stuff that as far as I'm concerned is kind of unforgivable. But of course, she's my mama, so she forgave me. God bless her. So anyway, I just need to you know, pick up the pieces and move on. But anyhow, that's that's how I've been feeling, real, real kind of shitty. Um, and I hope uh, the rest of y'all who are watching this now or in the future are not feeling shitty. And if you are, I hope you can figure out why and move on from it. That's what I'm trying to do, is figure out why and move on from it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I guess this too shall pass. Um, oh, and uh, as an aside, I wanted to formally thank It's Kokak's Life, um, Diacel and AJ, um, over in New York, um, they are um, yet another um, of my beloved YouTube people um, that sent me a wonderful love gift. I'd, I'd done a video on it. They'd sent me this awesome book that I just loved. So I forgot to thank you guys um, in my last video, so I'm thanking you now. Um, and also, um, I had to put all my craft stuff away sort of in mid-project because I, I had to get it out of my mom's apartment um there was there's no place to put it at her at her house because we've got stuff strung all over the place and then at my house there's no place to put it because i've got no table space i've got no floor space it's um i just can't spread my stuff out and leave it until i go into like my craft area and spend a couple three days cleaning that up and blah 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 then i can kind of get back to it so anyhow um gabby your um your banner is late because of that. And anybody else who's expecting um, something from me, if I told you I was going to send you something, it's not going to come until I can pull all that together. So anyway, that is what's going on for me right now. And um, I love you guys. And thanks for listening. Bye.